This is Duke University. And let me just read you a little excerpt from an article about Bill Trailer that appeared in Raw Vision magazine, an article by Nancy Carlins um, about four years ago. Um, and pay attention to the first sentence I'm about to read and think about this in the context of the art world. Bill Trailer is one of the most important 20th century artists that the United States has ever produced. Now, if you said that about an artist in France, maybe Matisse or Monet, everybody would say, oh yeah, I know their work. But Bill Trailer, most people don't know his work at all, have never heard of him. Whatever his subject matter, human figures, animals, narratives, abstractions, or some combination of the above, his mastery of form is always outstanding. His use of opaque versus open areas and his deft use of patterning versus flat color is especially noteworthy. Trailer's use of space is intriguing and his restrained use of color is always compelling. That he was born a slave in the last century, self-taught, and began drawing with the crudest of tools when he was in his 80s makes the approximately 1,800 drawings he produced over a period of about three years all the more remarkable. Bill Trailer was born a slave. He worked on plantations most of his life. He fathered 20 children. He never learned to read or write. No surprise in the Jim Crow South that he did not receive adequate education. And nobody in his, nobody who historians have talked to who knew him in his earlier years before he was 80 could think of any um, interest he ever showed in art. So this is why it was especially bizarre and fascinating that when he was 83 years old, he abandoned the place he'd been living out in the country and he moved to Montgomery, and he lived on the streets of Montgomery, Alabama, on one very busy Main Street. He set up shop where he sat every day, and from three years, for three years, starting when he was 83 years old, he began creating art. Most improbable thing you can imagine. He took pieces of old cardboard. He set up shop next to a laundry, and they would give him the cardboard that they would use as the inserts for the shirts that they were laundering. And he would take the cardboard and pencils and, and some straight edges, and he would draw these incredibly geometric images of his life of farm animals, of people he knew, collections of people doing things that were pretty ordinary. Um, and he wasn't doing them to keep them, he was just making them. And many, many of them, as you can imagine, got thrown away or lost or wet in the rain. Um, he would sleep in, a, in the back room of a funeral parlor that was a block away from where he set up shop. The, the man who owned it took an interest in him and, and liked him and let him sleep there at night. And then he would move back out to the same spot on the street of this Montgomery um, busy intersection every day for three years. About six months into this, and remember he was 83 years old when this started, and about six months into this an artist named Charles Shannon, who was um, a white man, a trained artist, um, a very interesting person himself, had noticed Mr. Trailer sitting there drawing and he took an interest in him and began bringing him art supplies and just developed a really strong friendship with him. Um, and Mr. Shannon, who had a great deal of access to the mainstream art world, ended up eventually, over those three years, getting Mr. Trailer a show in Montgomery and a show in Riverdale, New York, which was curated by someone who worked at the Museum of Modern Art. Um, and so for a brief period during these three years of intense productivity, Mr. Trailer got a lot of press and a lot of notoriety. Then in 1942, um, when he was 86, he contracted, contracted gangrene and had to have a leg amputated and ended up moving to a relative's house outside of Montgomery and stopped making art. So here was this life that lasted, I think, 88 years altogether, three years of which saw this incredible spurt of creative genius. Um, and after that ended, there was really no recognition at all of his place in the modern, modernist art world, of his, his role in, in influencing art trends or anything. It was just kind of a brief spurt and that was it. And I'll just show you some of his images quickly. Um, there are about 1,800 remaining today and they are extremely now um, well recognized as genius and as very significant. And you can see they're, they're elegant in their simplicity. They have um, a real balance and I just, I find them gorgeous. Um, this is one, they usually don't have names. This one he called, someone called construction with figures and animals. I don't really know that he ever named any of these. This is one that many people thought was a self portrait, um, which again, you see his use of color is rather astounding. And here is, um, looks to me like some people drinking and, and kind of partying with animals. I'm not really sure. <laughs> 
This one's called Exciting Event. I don't think he named that. And here's a horse. So again, these are everyday life images that Mr. Trailer created on the streets of Montgomery. And um, then at about, so that, that's sort of his story. And we'll come back to him again in a little bit. Um, produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.